my dear students welcome back to our channel students in this video i am explaining mba third semester subject investment analysis and portfolio management fourth unit important short and long questions and answers let's start quick revision first important short question is basic features of common stock Common stock represents ownership in a company, giving shareholders the right to vote on corporate matters, such as electing board members and approving major decisions. Common stockholders are entitled to a portion of the company's profits through dividends, though dividends are not guaranteed. In the event of liquidation, common stockholders are the last to receive any. Remaining assets after creditors and preferred stockholders are paid. Common Stock is typically traded on stock exchanges and its value fluctuates based on company performance, market conditions and investor sentiment making it a riskier investment compared to bonds or preferred stock. Next important short question is Price Earnings Multiplier Approach the price earnings PE multiplier approach is a method used to value a company's stock by multiplying its earnings per share EPAs by a relevant PE ratio. The PE ratio reflects how much investors are willing to pay for each dollar of earnings typically derived from historical data or industry averages. This approach is simple and widely used for quick stock valuation, especially for companies with stable earnings. However, it has limitations, such as relying on past performance and not accounting for future growth, making it more suitable for mature companies rather than high-growth ones. Next important short question is, what are free cash flows? Free cash flow, FCF, refers to the cash a company generates after deducting capital expenditures required to maintain or expand its asset base. It represents the cash available to investors, equity and debt holders for distribution or reinvestment. FCF is an important measure of a company's financial health as it shows the company's ability to generate cash from operations beyond operational costs and investments in long-term assets. A positive FCF indicates potential for growth, debt repayment or returning capital to shareholders, while negative FCF may signal financial difficulties or heavy investment spending. Next important short question is Explain Security Market Indexes Security market indexes are statistical measures that track the performance of a specific set of securities representing a particular market segment or the entire market. They are used to gauge the overall market sentiment and serve as benchmarks for portfolio performance. Examples include the S&P 500, though. Jones Industrial Average and Nifty 50. These indexes can be price weighted, market cap weighted or based on other methodologies. They help investors assess market trends, economic conditions and investment strategies, providing a reference point for comparing individual assets or portfolios. Next important short question is State the assumptions of CAP. The capital asset pricing model, CAP, relies on several key assumptions. 1. Efficient markets. All investors have access to all relevant information. And asset prices reflect this. 2. Risk aversion. Investors are rational and risk averse, seeking to maximize returns for a given level of risk. 3. Single period investment horizon. Investors make decisions based on a one period time frame. 
Four, no taxes or transaction costs. There are no costs associated with buying, selling or holding assets. Five, risk-free asset. A risk-free asset is available with a known return such as government bonds. These assumptions simplify the model but may not hold in real-world markets. Next important short question is how is the Nifty 50 calculated? The Nifty 50 is a market capitalization weighted index, meaning it reflects the performance of the top 50 companies listed on the National Stock Exchange, NSE, based on their market capitalization. The index is calculated by multiplying the stock price of each constituent by the number of shares. Outstanding summing these values and then dividing by a base market. Capitalization The formula for calculating the Nifty is This methodology ensures that larger companies have more influence on the index's movement. First important long question is Dividend Capitalization Models The Dividend Capitalization Model, DCM, also known as the Dividend Discount model, DDM, is a method used to estimate the value of a company's stock based on the present value of its expected future dividends. This model assumes that dividends are the primary source of return to shareholders and it is most applicable to companies that have a consistent dividend paying history. Key features 1. Constant Dividend Model Zero growth, the simplest form of DCM, assumes that dividends will remain constant indefinitely. The stock price is calculated by dividing the annual dividend by the required rate of return. P0 is equal to DR, where OP is the current stock price. OD is the annual dividend. OR is the required rate of return. This model is useful for companies that pay stable and predictable dividends. 2. Gordon Growth Model Constant Growth Model This is the most commonly used version of the DDM, assuming that dividends will grow at a constant rate forever. The formula is P0 is equal to D1RG, where OD is the dividend expected in the next period. OR is the required rate of return. OG is the constant growth rate of dividends. This model is ideal for mature companies with stable growth rates. 3. Multistage Dividend Model for companies with changing growth rates. Example, high growth followed by stable growth. The multistage model is used. This model calculates the present value of dividends during different growth phases, making it more flexible and realistic for businesses in transition. Assumptions The company pays dividends and these dividends will continue to be paid indefinitely. The required rate of return is greater than the dividend growth rate, i.e. R. G. The model assumes that the value of dividends is the primary return to shareholders. Conclusion The dividend capitalization model is a powerful tool for valuing companies with predictable and stable dividend payouts. It is most effective for mature companies or those in industries with stable earnings and growth rates. However, the model has limitations especially for non-dividend paying companies or businesses with irregular dividend policies. Proper application requires accurate dividend growth predictions and a reasonable estimate of the required rate of return. Next important long question is Explain the key principles and assumptions underlying arbitrage pricing. Theory API how does APT differ from the capital pricing model? CAP Arbitrage Pricing Theory, APT, 
is a multi-factor model used to explain the relationship between the expected return of a financial asset and various macroeconomic factors. Unlike the capital asset pricing model, CAP, which relies on a single factor, market risk, APT posits that asset returns are influenced by multiple factors and its key principles are built on the idea of arbitrage opportunities. Key principles and assumptions of APT. One factor model, APT assumes that asset returns are influenced by several systematic factors, example, inflation, interest rates, GDP growth. These Factors are typically unknown but are assumed to be observable. 2. Arbitrage APT is grounded in the idea that if an asset's price deviates from its true value due to mispricing, based on these factors, arbitrage opportunities arise. Traders exploit these mispricings by buying undervalued assets and selling overvalued ones, which forces prices to Adjust back to equilibrium. 3. Linear relationship. APT assumes that asset returns are linearly related to the factors. The expected return on an asset is calculated as the weighted sum of the factor sensitivities, also known as factor loadings, and the risk premiums for each factor. 4. No arbitrage condition. One of the most important assumptions of APT is that arbitrage opportunities will be eliminated in an efficient market, ensuring that asset prices reflect all available information. APT versus CAP While APT and CAP are both models for determining the expected return of an asset, they differ in several key ways. One, number of factors. OCAP assumes a single factor, the market risk, systematic risk, as the primary determinant of asset returns. OAPT allows for multiple factors influencing returns, making it a more flexible model for complex real-world scenarios. 2. Market Portfolio OCAP relies on the concept of a market portfolio that includes all risky assets. OAPT does not require a market portfolio and factors can be chosen based on the specific characteristics of the asset. 3. Risk Premium OCAP has a single risk premium for the market while APT has multiple risk premiums corresponding to different factors. Conclusion APT offers a more flexible and nuanced approach to asset pricing than cap buying. Recognizing the influence of multiple factors on asset returns rather than relying solely on market risk. While cap is easier to apply due to its simplicity, APT provides a broader framework, especially in cases where multiple macroeconomic variables drive market movements. Both models assume efficient markets and the absence of arbitrage opportunities, but APT's multi-factor approach is more adaptable to varying market conditions. Next important long question is, you have a portfolio with four stocks, P, stock Q and stock R and stock S. The information for each stock is as follows. Calculate the expected return of the portfolio based on the security market line. SML To calculate the expected return of the portfolio using the security market line, SML, we will use the capital asset pricing model, CAP. The CAP Formula for the expected return of an asset is Where E, RE is the expected return of the asset. Step 1. Calculate the expected return for each stock. Using the CAP formula, we will calculate the expected return for each of the stocks. Step 2. Calculate the expected return of the portfolio. 
the expected return of the portfolio is a weighted average of the expected returns of the individual stocks using the portfolio weights. The portfolio weights are So, the expected return of the portfolio E, portfolio, is Conclusion The expected return of the portfolio based on the security market line, SML, is 13.6%. Next important long question is Assume yourself as a portfolio manager and with the help of the following Details State the securities that are overpriced or underpriced in terms of the Security market line To identify whether the securities are overpriced or underpriced we need to Compare the expected return of each security with its required return based on the security market line, SML, which is derived from the capital asset. Pricing model, CAP. The CAP formula is where E, RE is equal to expected return of the security. Step 1. Calculate the required return for each security using CAP. Step 2. Compare the expected return with the required return. Conclusion Overpriced securities A, C, E Underpriced securities B, D, F Fairly priced Nifty Index Students, for other units explanation and other subjects quick revision or explanation links are available in description, check out once. I think it will be useful to you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Like and share this video with your friends.